Good morning, children. Today we are going to discuss about another important concept in the locomotion and movement chapter. That is the benefits of regular exercise. We discussed appendicular skeleton system, axial skeleton system, total bones. Okay, like that we discussed right and uh, the bone structure that common bodies there are not that is you know where the structure of long bone we discussed right so in this class we will be discussed about what you called regular exercises and we will go to another chapter disorders of uh, what you called muscular and skeleton system we discussed in the previous classes now benefits of the regular exercises will be discussed now what are those will be there what kind of exercises we have to do that one we have to see the first important the benefits and types of exercises <clears throat> exercise and physical activity fall into four basic categories so exercise and physical activity fall into the join fall into four basic categories endurance strength exercise okay balance exercise and flexibility exercises what are those endurance strength exercises balance exercises flexibility exercises okay endurance means what aerobic activities aerobic activities increases the breathing and heart rate endurance means aerobic activities increases the breathing and heart rate they keep the circulatory system healthy and improve overall fitness so endurance or aerobic activities increase the breathing and heart rate they keep the circulatory system healthy and improve overall fitness next strength and exercises make the muscles stronger strength exercises make the muscles stronger they help to stay independent and carry out everyday activities such as climbing stairs and carrying bags okay so strength exercises make the muscles stronger they help to stay independent and carry out everyday activities such as climbing stairs and carrying bags balance exercises help to prevent falls which is a common problem in older adults many strengthening exercises also improves balance many strengthening exercises also improves balance flexibility exercises flexibility help to stretch body muscles help to stretch body muscles okay for more freedom of joints movement regular exercises can produces the regular exercises okay very very important regular exercises okay so can produce as the following beneficial physical activities what are those so first one <clears throat> the muscle used in exercise grow larger and stronger so the muscles which are used in the exercise will grow longer and larger and stronger the resting heart rate goes down more enzymes are synthesized in the muscle fibers so when you do exercise more enzymes are synthesized with the muscle fibers ligaments and tendons becoming stronger joints be becoming more flexible protection from heart attack influences hormonal activity improves cognitive functions prevents obesity promotes confidence and esteem aesthetically better with good psychic overall well being with good quality of life because of exercise these many benefits are there prevents the depression stress and anxiety so because of regular exercises prevents the stress and anxieties during muscular exercise there is an increase in metabolism so exercise means increase the metabolism o2 need of the muscle is increased this requirement is met with more oxygen rich rbcs available to the active mm -hmm. there is an increase in heart rate and cardiac output along with balanced diet 
Physical activity plays a significant role in strengthening the muscles and bones. Physical activity plays a significant role in strengthening the muscles and the bones. Muscles and the bones. That is important. So, like this, exercises, endurance, strength exercises, balance exercises, flexibility exercises. So, overall, what we will be good quality of life we will get because of the exercise. Because of exercise, a good quality of life we will be get it. Okay. So, next another important criteria that is next chapter we are going to discuss about the next chapter neural control and coordination we call neural control and coordination so you know locomotion and uh, movements one of the sig movement is one of the significant features so different types of movements amoeboid movements ciliary movements flagellar movements muscular movements so muscles Skeleton muscles, visceral muscles, cardiac muscles, like most striking microscopic features, skeletal muscle. Skeletal system consists of bones and cartilages, appendicular exoskeleton, disorders, typical large bone diaphoesis, epiphysis, and membranes like that we discussed in the chapter. So next chapter is what we called neural control and coordination. What we called neural coordination neural control and coordination it's a very important chapter <coughs> why we are discussing about this nervous system you know it is a overall body under control of the nervous system so overall body under control of which one the nervous system so we are going to discuss about the overall the body okay so nervous system will be what you called we will be discussed very clearly in this chapter in this video introduction part okay that one you know very well nervous system first why should we have to discuss about nervous system come on so did you ever wonder how our body functions the body maintains a stable condition the body maintains a stable condition even when the outside environment changes our eyes help to see things around us. Ears help us to various sounds. Heart beats continuously and rhythmically. Okay. Air goes in and out of lungs. Eyes shed tears when our limbs get hurt. Each cell of the body works in a coordinated manner. Okay. So, do you know how it is coordinated and controlled? So, simple questions. How these all are coordinated and controlled? Ears are hearing, eyes we are seeing, okay, we are maintaining balance, okay, heart is functioning, eyes shed the tears when your limbs get hurt. So, these all are very, very important. So, how? How this can happening? So, the neural system in our body coordinates all the other systems to work together. So, neural system in our body coordinate all other systems to work effectively and smoothly every second diverse functions in our body are performed by neural system day and night millions of messages pass as stimuli through the cells of the neural system to stimulate the heart to beat kidney to excrete waste so many stimulus heart to beat kidney to excrete the waste mouth to relish the delicious food and even more remarkable how many functions features of the neural system it is ability to respond simultaneously to severe stimuli. For instance, we can play piano and sing, listen to music and do household chores. In all such coordinated movements, whether skilled performances or routine tasks like cycling or driving, integrating, power of the neural system is involved. So, driving and listening music. So, both works at a time. How? Because of nervous system. So, like that, in this chapter, you will understand how neural system is organized that one we are going to discuss so first one neural system the neural system comprises a highly specialized cells called neurons which can detect receive neurons which can detect detect receive process and transmit the different kinds of stimuli stimuli means suppose i am calling you are responding that's a stimuli suppose you got a very cool condition you are shivering stimuli Suppose high temperature, sweating, shivering, smell, shivering, taste, shiver, that is simples. 
stimulus. These all are stimulus. Simple swarm of neural system as nerval net is seen in lower invertebrates. The neural system of higher animals are well developed and perform the following basic functions. So neural system in the animals are well developed. They will perform some functions. What are those sensory functions? It receives the sensory input, sensory incoming, sensory input from internal and external environment. What are functions? It transmits the motor commands from the brain to the skeleton to muscular system. So motor means outgoing, sensory incoming and autonomic reflex actions. You know very well, conditional reflex actions and unconditional reflex actions. So the human nervous system will be seen. Human nervous system, the human nervous system is divided into two, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So, the structural and functional unit of the neural system are neurons. The structural and functional unit of nervous system are neurons. So, the very important thing is, the non-nervous special cells, so neurons are supported by glial cells, very important. Supporting cells are there for neurons, they are called neuroglia very important word what you call neuroglia so the neurons will get the support from the some types of cells they will be called what you call that is neuroglia so neuroglia means the cells which are very helpful to support the neurons neuroglia neuroglia supporting cells so that is important next one more important point we are discussing the there are three functional classes of neurons how many classes functional classes three functional classes in the neurons what are those we will be see there are efferent neurons efferent neurons inter neurons efferent neurons they takes the sensory impulse to the central nervous system efferent means incoming Take the information to the central nervous system from organs, sensory organs. Efferent neurons carry the motor impulses from the CNS to the effector organs. And the interneurons that lie entirely within the central nervous system between the efferent and efferent. So interneurons between the efferent and efferent neurons they will be present. Efferent incoming, efferent outgoing motor. So like this, central neural system lacks a connective tissue, so the interneuron spaces is filled with the neural glia. So nervous system uh, don't have any connecting tissue, filled with the glial cells. They perfect, they perform several functions. Neural glia perform several functions, such as providing nourishment to the surrounding neurons, memory process, repairing and joint tissues. So this all consists of uh, the protection and they perform what you called uh, nourishment memory repairing and injured tissue repairing the injured tissues regenerating capacity all under control of which one so neural glia we call neuroglia so these all are very important neurons as a structural and functional unit of nervous system i told so a neuron is a microscopic structure so we'll discuss about neuron detail a neuron is a structural and a functional unit of the nervous system the three major parts of the neurons, you know very well, cell body, dendrite, axon. The cell body is spherical. And the cellular organelles, a typical cell will be present. Plasma membrane, except centriole, cell body don't have centriole. All cell organelles present in the cell body. Plasma membrane covering the neuron. So neuron covering with the plasma membrane are called neural lemma and the axon, axon lemma. Neural lemma, neuron. Axon lemma, axon. So, so there will be branch of fibers are there that will be called dendrites you know from 6th to 7th 8th class onwards you are studying about these all the things so dendrites which transmits impulse towards the cell body the cell body and dendrites contain cytoplasm and granulated endoplasmic reticulum that is called nissel granules very important bit nissel granules are present in the cell body which granules nissel granules nissel granules are present in the cell body an axon is a long fiber that arises from a cone shaped area you know axon long fiber branch distal and axon hillock is a place where the nerve impulse is generated 
very important the axon one neuron branches and forms a connection with many other neurons so what is that the axon one neuron branches and forms connection with many neurons an axon contains same organelles found in the dendrites and cell body but lacks in cell granules and golgi apparatus so in the axon no nissel granules and golgi apparatus so the axon covered by myelin sheath made with which one squamous cells so squamous cells the myelin sheath will be there and you know the gaps are there my non myelinated squamous cells are non continuous there are gaps in the myelin sheath they are called nodes of runway what is called nodes of runway so that is a very very important next one each branch is each branch is distal axon terminate axon terminates by bulb like structure that's called synaptic knob the synaptic knob consists of synaptic vesicles they releases the neurotransmitters acetyl choline like that that is important so next there are the neurons are divided into what do you called the axon transmits nerve impulse away from cell body to an interneural space or neuromuscular junction so axon transmits impulse to neuromuscular junction or interneural space next uh, based upon the number of axon and dendrites based upon the number of axon and dendrites the neurons are divided into three types multipolar neurons bipolar neurons unipolar neurons what is this multipolar neurons bipolar neurons and unipolar neurons that one you see so multipolar means possess with one axon and two or more dendrites one axon multipolar only one axon dendrites are one two or more bipolar two cross and one axon one dendrite one axon one dendrite in the bipolar unipolar single shot from one axon unipolar neurons are located in the ganglia of cranial and spinal nerves cranial and spinal nerves that is important so multipolar one axon many dendrites bipolar one axon one dendrite unipolar only one axon so multipolar where will be right now in our brain and vertebral uh, vertical spinal cord vertebral cord bipolar in the retina unipolar in embryonic stage nervous system we will see unipolar neurons next uh, generation of conduction of uh, impulses nerve impulse so nerve impulse detail structure will be studied in the tomorrow's class but up to that you should listen carefully what is it the the section deals with how the nerve impulses are produced and conducted in our body so how the impulse is conducted in our body will be discussed in the axon the cytoplasm is there that is called inner or to the axial emma cytoplasm is there that is called icf so axon inner the axial emma cytoplasm that's for intercellular fluid outside the axon that is called extracellular fluid icf intercellular fluid acf extracellular fluid of axon so this icf and ecf are very very important for the what is called nerve impulses why the e icf large amount of potassium and magnesium phosphate icf intercellular fluid potassium magnesium phosphorus okay large amount of potassium magnesium phosphate potassium magnesium phosphate in intercellular fluid in the axon next extracellular fluid the outside of axial emma contains large amounts of sodium chloride and bicarbonates and nutrients and like that there will be present on the extracellular fluid so they will be very very important next one this uh, metabolic way so you know very well the squamous cells are there and some uh, what you called in the extra extracellular fluid outside large amount of sodium chloride bicarbonates nutrients and oxygen for the cell and carbon dioxide and metabolic waste released by the neuro ne neuronal cells okay these all are present the ecf and icf contains negatively charged particles and positively charged particles so icf and ecf consists of both negatively charged and positively charged particles also will be there so about generation of uh, generation and conduction of nerve impulses detailed way in next class we will be discuss up to that so exercise importances 
sensory functions, motor functions of uh, what you call neurons, autonomic functions, CNS, PNS, and different different interneurons, and uh, what you call cell neuron structures, and what is multipolar, what is bipolar, what is unipolar, okay, what is interneural space, okay, what are synaptic vesicles, these all information you have to be remember and uh, sincerely practice in the from the textbook.